Yeah, good afternoon. Sorry for late. I was not planning to, but I was stuck in the one application. Uh, it's for ECT, and it's not working. Anyway, uh, radiation equipment. Uh, the, this presentation is give you a bit of idea that what you have to do when you go to the clinic, and how you handle this equipment. Because what happened actually when I started my career, there was a lots of breakdown happening, and then the the management was a bit worried about that because they have quite pretty expensive business. You know, if you drop a, just a small diode, then it's like seven, eight thousand dollars you have to pay it. And the time of the physicist has to be commissioned and all these businesses is more than, and the machine time as well. If you calculate everything, it's, it's a lot more than that. So that's why they have actually, I'm just going through these are the, some of the equipment which normally we use it in a clinical environment as a physicist. So hopefully it will help you a little bit. So. This is the first thing normally when you go for the dosimetry, this is the one of the important bit you have to be knowing about the electrometers. So whenever you start, you know, switch on the electrometer, before you connect the chamber, you should check all these business. What are the, these business are? You have to select the right mode, which you are using for. Then check the range of the electrometer, because if, the, if you don't select the right range, it will be overload. And overload is actually is not good for this uh, electrometer. The second is the run backgrounds to make it all the current go. You know the circuitry it has inside. It actually leak out all the you know the make it null. You know it's, it make it a equilibrium. So then the before you start the one of the most critical things the people don't bother too much and they damage the most of the diodes. They don't check the last bit. Uh, where is that? Oh yes. Uh, this bit, the voltages. The voltages for diode should be zero. So you can't see any voltages here. Make sure it's zero. And another thing is actually important here. When you uh, connect your chamber, this also should be zero. Because when you are connecting your normal ionization chamber, it's 400 volt. It's pretty heavy and it can hurt you a lot. So just careful as a well, uh, as a you know uh, safety point of view, so um, pharma chamber uh, cross calibration voltage minus three hundred, and then see what happened. Uh, if you uh, this is the one of the most sensitive part of the chamber because when you do the uh, in water, you don't put a cover on it. There's a, normally it's come with the cover, so you have seen it. I think so. This is the one of this. So this is the cover on it. So if you remove this cover, normally you use it, remove remove the cover and use it like this way. So what happened if you don't um, handle properly, when you're removing it, just make sure you put the hand underneath. And it's like we have six or seven chamber, I see myself broken by this way. If you don't care, they hold it from here. Don't hold it from here. If you're holding it here, put the hand underneath. Yes, like this. Yeah. Thank you. Like this. So when it's you're coming out, because the wire is so flexible, it's fla come down and it hit on the ground and it's damaged easily. No problem. So it's very sensitive, especially those um, um, uh, which are actually made of, um, not a plastic, the, it's called graphite. actually? Graphites. Graphite ones. So another things, these are the, Cable tights. So this is the another thing. When you tight this bit, uh, this is basically lucky because this you can see here. If you tight too much, there's a, one another s screw here. You untie it, it will come from here, and it can damage the. And it's happened once. So another thing is actually these bits. Uh, these ones. Just make sure you don't tight too much because when you tight this bit too much, it slip. And a slip, this come out. Because they have a split, uh, you know, a split, it's, it's a ring like, it's a ring. It's keep like this. When you tight too much, it's bent and then you slip and it's come out. So, some basic thing, don't handle the left parallel plate chamber because this is the one of the sensitive part of the uh, the uh, chamber for the parallel plate. 
and you always use to you know cover from the sides, not from the up and downs. And then, so when you're handling the, there's a, some parallel period chamber like the advanced markers are. The, um, there's another one from the IBA one, which was that is IBA one, the small one. Uh, NACB, yes, NACB chambers. They have a cover on it on the top to make the water, uh, those are to uh, what they call it actually waterproofing sleeve. So use this way. The people don't they, when they are putting it, they use maybe this way on the from the side from the from from here. Don't hold it from here because what happened when you bend it, it can damage from here easily. So just careful when you're handling it. So handle it like this way, as shown here. So hold from the side. So this is one of the most sensitive part of the chamber. Don't touch it. It's very fragile. A minor pressure can damage it easily. So uh, another thing when you backing up, to make sure you don't left any wire in between, easily damage. This is the one electro uh, already I saw once. They have damaged it because they pull it and then figure it out why it's happening, why is the chamber is not working fine. This is actually um, optical fiber sort of stuff it can damage very easily. So just very careful. It's just this this is give you an idea that when you go to the clinics, don't do these mistakes. So it can help you a lot. So another thing is actually here. So the voltage is always be zero when you are using diode, which I already explained. Okay. When you use the water tank, which is you are not routinely using it, but uh, whenever you're doing the commissioning, whenever you having a big t breakdown on your machine, you normally use it. When you put the water tank, make sure that these locks are actually properly latched. Otherwise, what happened? You're doing a, um, you set up, everything is done. You're just moving and you just hit it. It's more like this. What happened? It's move. And you go and you oh, what's going on with it? Scan is not right. Flatness has gone off or something, you know? And it's, 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 it's very important. Other than that, is that also because you have a, lots of water in it. It's quite heavy. So it's not good to leave it like that. So. Always ask help. <laughs> so don't push yourself because it's very heavy, especially with the PTW tank. Luckily, we have here IBA, which is good because they have a separate uh, tank. This is the water tank here. The water tank is separate than the tank, uh, this water tank. They are two separate parts. So that's easier to move. But for the PTW, it's too heavy. Make sure you don't push yourself alone. Uh, <laughs> uh, another thing is actually the limit setting. When you're putting the uh, water tank, um, so when you install the chamber in a water tank, what happened? You have to sel select how much the water tank can travel from the one end to another end. So what happened? If you don't do that, is go all the way in and hit the wall and damage the chamber straight away. Say like this. So. This is the one of the. This is called the limit set in the water tank. This is the first thing after you set the tank and level it. You the first thing you do to check the limits. Um, another thing: don't put anything. Uh, uh, the water level you should be checking in. Which I already explained. You have to make sure that the tank is level. If the water is not uh, tank is not level, it can give you the false reading. Anyway. Uh, another thing is the temperature. You normally, if you're doing absolute dosimetry, sometimes you put the uh, these thermometers in it. So don't put the thermometer where the rod is traveling. This rod, if it is traveling, you hit the thermometer and can break it easily. So which is I break once. So, <laughs> so don't put it in the way. Just put it on the corner of the tank, and don't put on the on the rail here on the this rail as well on this side as well. So because they, they have a traveling uh, something. So, OK. Another thing is actually to make sure that these cables are properly tight. Because if it is fell in the water, you have a 400 or 300 watts set to the, you know, uh, to the chamber. And it can easily make a peak blast. 
uh, electric hazards as for you. So just make sure. So another thing, this is the wire. So if when you put the wire in, you just make sure the wire is all the way in. It's depending different property, different uh, and uh, different people have a different because it, this wire could affect your readings when you are doing a big fields. This wire is actually in the radiation and it's producing a sum of the signal and a very very low signal, but it, you can see it the difference when you are comparing very very precise readings. So, but normally my recommendation is to put it like this way all the way because when you go down, there is no stretch on the wire because this this. This this rod is go up and down as well, and then longitudinally, uh, sorry, laterally as well, and in uh, in all three directions. So if you're going under this corner, this will be very far away from that everything. So this it have a sufficient space to travel all around. So just make sure you, these things come with the practice, but uh, you can learn now if you want. So. Front pointers, and then, okay. One another thing is when the people put the SSD, you heard about SSD, uh, you know, where the source to the surface distance. When they put the, you know, the to measure it, the surface, how much the height of the surface, water surface from the source, you normally put the front pointer. And this front pointer, if it is missed, it fell off on the on the water tank. And if the chamber is exactly underneath, it can damage the chamber straight away because it's quite heavy. And chamber are very sensi uh, sensitive and very small. Okay, always zero. <laughs> this is one of the critical things that people forget always. So just, uh, what is wrong with this profile? Okay, yep, anyone can tell. What is this? Water, yes. Yeah, so water is not flat, or the it could be happened the bar is actually tilted. This has happened actually once with me, so if the bar was tilted. There's another reason as well. In PTW, this is the problem with the PTW tank. I don't know if they have resolved it, but in the old versions, there was an issue. If you go to every time when you log into the PTW water tank, you have to select chamber. Either it already selected, pre-selected. When you open it, or already pre-selected, you can see, you know, what, what they call default settings. But still, you have to do it. If you don't do it, you can get this sort of profile. It has happened one of the exams, just before one day before the exams. We are doing some testing. I was doing the testing with the one of the registrar, and he has this profile, and he couldn't figure out what's going on. We checked the level; everything is fine, perfectly all right, but. One side is pretty good, but the other side is showing like this sort of profile. So always make a habit when you just log into the water tank computer, select the chamber, either selected already, select it again. So make sure that nothing happened. But but now nowadays they, they are making much more robust system, not like in our our time. So but anyway, but it's a good thing. Oh, it's a mess. Anyway, so okay, and this is another thing. When you are actually do not put the when you're doing a solid water, and also make sure the chamber is not shouldn't be because normally you do the surface to the surface uh, as as it, making sure that your you normally should be running your front front pointer slightly here in this position because of it is very flat solid water. So you just do it here. Rather than doing on the on the on the on the chamber positions, so there are the few other different phantoms. So which is normally we used in routinely in our um, clinical environment. So in these phantoms, normally the, these phantoms are actually you see these these screws here. What happens actually? These screws actually you can lose it and put the films in like this, here like this. But you have to put together. But normally, sometimes people don't. They have a, like a special. This you see. This is this is the small uh, flat rail, which can you put on top, and then you can rail it, and it, they can. You don't have to make it like a, uh, sell, you know, sell, align it. It's automatically aligned by this because they have a grooves underneath, and these grooves. You see these ones and these one. These two grooves. 
they sit on the on these grooves and easily slide and you can tie it make it easy for you so other bits actually when you are actually using these phantoms you make sure these are actually what is loose they can come out and then if there is they come out maybe the beam is coming through this they can give you the wrong number which you are not supposed to you think oh there's something wrong with the plan but it's not wrong with the plan actually your thing and another thing here where whenever you use these bits to make sure you you put the tape around on this one uh, there's a device normally they put which is called a gating you have seen it we have it here isn't it mm -hmm. yeah so you normally tape it when you are doing it so um, the other thing actually uh, because this 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 phantom is actually travel in and out as well so when you put your chamber make sure that your chamber is actually have a sufficient flexibility to move in and out if they because when it's move in and out and rotate so it's the uh, wire should have a sufficient space then it can can can't be stretched out so tape the IR reflector whatever this is okay do not strongly tight body frames which is this bits and it can damage because these are the very plastic made so because they want to make it a tissue equivalent so oh, sorry so this is uh, try to make it tight not too much make it tight just remain in this you know static position so uh, uh, careful doing the ins uh, insertion of the chamber and the removal of the chamber as mentioned before I am already in the first up and you just removing the chamber put a hand underneath all this okay um, uh, if you have uh, unassembled the phantom, so that I actually explained you already all these bits. So anyway, there are lots of other things which we can learn with the few, you know, things. Um, uh, wh when you go to clinics, uh, then you will be, you know, you know what to do. But anyway, these are the some of the basic information you should be careful when you are going to the clinics. Hope it will be useful. Okay, thanks. So much. Thank you.